So when dealing with one of these kinds of problems, a proportionality problem, um, use what I call the ones equation. Basically take every variable and just throw it in as a one. Centripetal force, a one. Mass, a one. Velocity, a one. But if an object is, or one of the quantities is squared in the equation, you gotta square it here. And then R. So the way this works is basically you're treating mass, velocity, radius. Everything is a one. Now they're telling us, okay, well, the centripetal force of an object is eight newtons. What would it now be if the mass was doubled? Well, all right, I don't know what the mass was. I, I don't have a velocity. I don't have an R. So how am I supposed to find the new centripetal force? So that's why we use this quote unquote ones equation. What quantity did they tell you is being changed? Mass. Mass is being doubled. So mass is this piece right here. All right. So we're going to take this one and make it, if they said doubled, we're going to make it a two. If they said tripled, we would make mass a three. So we turn mass to a two. Did they tell us we were changing velocity at all? Absolutely flipping not. So we leave that as a one. It has to still be squared. Do they say anything about the radius? No. So work this out. Two times one squared is just going to be two. Two divided by one is two times the centripetal force. So if the centripetal force was originally eight, now the answer will be 16 newtons. It wound up doubling. How did I do this? So, okay, that's a good question. Do you understand why I took that? Okay, so you got this. So, and you understand this piece. Okay, so this right here, that is like in between my fingers, mass times velocity squared over radius. So I doubled the mass, left velocity is a one, but you still have a square radius. Okay, so basically that would come out to be two. So remember, these things multiplied and divided by is equal to my centripetal force. So basically they're saying, okay, we didn't know what any of these values were, but when you put them in the calculation, centripetal force would be eight. So what would happen if we just wound up doubling the mass? So is everything is involved? Well, then this would equal two times whatever the centripetal force was. So if the centripetal force was originally eight, I just substitute eight for where the centripetal force was. So in this one, I write down my ones equation. All right, what do they tell me is going on? They want to know what's good with the centripetal force. Um, if the centripetal force of an object in circular motion is eight newtons, what if the radius is doubled? Okay, so did the mass change? Nah, so I'm gonna leave the m a one. Did the velocity change? No, so I'll leave that as a one. Did the radius change? Yup, so this one, I'm going to make a two, correct? Right, because the radius is double. It went from a one to a two. One squared is one times one is one over two. So we would wind up with half of our original centripetal force value. If the centripetal force was originally eight, one half of eight is equal to four newtons. Okay, so really quickly, guys, I want you to try the rest of those ones. All right, three, five, three, four, five, six. So three, four, five, six. So try those real quick. Okay, so for three, here's my ones equation. Again, centripetal force, mass, tangential velocity, tangential velocity, linear velocity, linear speed, that's all, V is the same thing. It's all encompassing. Any one of those is V. Radius. Okay, great. What if the linear or tangential speed or velocity is doubled? 
So nothing was said about the mass, so I leave it a 1. Velocity, they said, is going to be doubled, so I make it a 2. You still have to square it. Excuse me. You still have to square it. Nothing was said about the radius, so you leave the radius as a 1. And then just play everything out. Uh, so 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 divided by 1 is still just... Four, so you would have four times the original centripetal force value. If the original value for FC is eight, four times eight is going to give us a new centripetal force of 32, 32 newtons. Okay, now centripetal force. All right, so centripetal force, mass. No, I don't know why I did that. That was not a good two times centripetal velocity squared over the radius. Okay, what's good if the mass is cut in half? So m would be up here, so that's just going to be a 1 half. Times nothing was said about the velocity, so we keep it a 1. And nothing was said about the radius. So 1 squared is 1 times 1 half is 0.5. All right, so 0.5 over 1 is still just going to give me 0.5 times the original centripetal force value. So 0.5 times 8 gives us a centripetal force here of 4 newtons. Okay. The next one, number 5. The centripetal force uh, of a circular motion, 8 newtons, what if the radius is half? So again, uh, centripetal force, mass, centripetal velocity, or... Uh, Tangential velocity, speed, over the radius. Okay, what if the radius is cut in half? All right, mass didn't change, velocity didn't change, radius gets cut in half. 1 squared is 1 times 1 is 1. 1 divided by 0.5. And that comes out to give me 2. So this one would be 2 times the centripetal force or our original centripetal force value. 2 times 8 gives us a new centripetal force of 16 newtons. And for this one here, OK, what if the tangential speed is halved? Tangential or linear speed, tangential linear velocity, again, all the same thing. Nothing was said about the mass. This thing is cut in half. All right, but remember, you have to square velocity, speed. That has to be squared. Nothing was said about the radius. So 1 half squared is comes out to be, in your calculator, 0.25. Times that by 1, it's going to be 0.25. Over 1, it's still 1, or 1 fourth. So 0.25 times the original centripetal force value. And then if the original value is 8, one-fourth of that, or 0.25 times that, is going to give you a value of 2 newtons. OK, so guys, that is how you use the ones equation. If they were talking about this with acceleration, it's centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. So really, the only two things that can change are R and V. And it would do it the same way you would just do this. <clears throat> so guys, number seven, based off of the notes that we had just kind of talked about. Okay, if you're thinking about these as four horses on a carousel, all right, they want you to ask, or they're asking, rank them from the greatest to least for these two things, rotational speed. So rotational speed is basically the amount of rotations per time. Who's going to make this more rotations? Very good. They're all making the same. 
same. They're all equal. But your tangential speed or velocity. All right, so I'm just going to do a very bad drawing here. Okay, if this was C, this is... All right, so if we're only going up to like this spot here. As this thing turns, as this turns, you can see that the outside guy has to cover more distance in the same amount of time. So this, if I want, actually, let's do this. So if this was my line, okay, the person on the outside rail has to cover way more ground. So therefore, you see that they have to move faster than the inside. So very simply for this one, it will be D, all right, is greater than C, is greater than B, is greater than A, or D, C, B. A doesn't matter. In that order. Now, on the flip side of this, on the flip side of this, if you missed that, that's also in the notes, also on the board. Okay, you guys should have enough uh, from the notes to then answer these guys here. Okay. So please do that right now. Okay, so this worksheet from yesterday, we are going to be looking at the calculations here. Okay, so let's see. What do they want here? We are given, excuse me, guys, stop. We are given mass two kilograms we are given radius 0 0.5 meters and it has a tangential velocity of four meters per second what is the centripetal force the equation for centripetal force mv squared over r the answer should be in newtons um that one's just simple plug and chug that one's simple plug and chug. All right. So the next the next thing that we should have, okay, in number six. In number six, we are given where is this? So in number six, uh, you have a race car that has a mass of 500 kilograms. It has a radius of 25 meters and experiences a centripetal force of 50 newtons. They want you to find the tangential velocity, not just... Okay, so uh, that equation, <laughs> okay, so if we have this equation here to get V squared by itself, if I multiply both sides by R, I would have centripetal force times radius is equal to MV squared. All right, so I'm just going to show this. Okay, then to get uh, v squared by itself, you got to divide both sides by m. But we need v by itself, so to get v by itself, you have to you would have to square root both sides of that. So V is going to equal centripetal force times radius divided 
divided by the mass, and then you square root. So do everything under the square root first, multiply on top, divide by on bottom, then square root to solve for that. Okay, seven, hockey puck, mass, 3.5 kilograms. It has a tangential velocity of five meters per second and experiences a centripetal force, 28 newtons. What is the distance from the center? Radius is your question mark. So again, take this equation, solve for R. Okay, we need R by itself, so we will, I don't like it down here. If I multiply both sides by R, I get this, FCR, MV squared. R by itself, how would I do that? Yeah, divide both sides by F sub C. So the equation you're going to use is R is equal to MV squared divided by F C. All right, so you, this is the equation here that you need to use. You need to use this equation. So right now, these are the three equations that you need. And then the final one. Okay, looking at this, you have a tangential velocity of 40 meters per second, a radius of 20 meters, and a centripetal force. Damn of 18,000 newtons. What is the mass of the truck? Okay, again, same thing. Multiply both sides by R. You have this, and now it's pretty much just how do I get m by itself? Divide both students sides by v squared. At this time, all PMO senior students that still need their senior portrait taken, please report to the auditorium. Thank you. All right. So this will leave us with m is equal to force times radius over v squared. OK, so you guys have the equations now that you need. You will solve these for homework. Okay, you should be able to actually probably finish them right about now.